Welcome back to another episode of the Stevie Weeby Show. This episode is sponsored by Keeps. Stop worrying about hair loss and start taking action today. What's going on over here? We have a very special guest. Please welcome back for the second time, musician, Omniboy. <laughs> Good job. Okay. That was beautiful, man. Thank you. Yeah, I love your piano playing. That was fun. I wish I could play a quarter of that. I wish I had a piano, like a piano yeah. piano in my apartment. That would man. be so nice. First things first, I have to let you know, every time I pass a Little Caesars pizza, <laughs> oh, you're yeah. the only person I think of. Oh, my God. Last time, yeah, Are I came in with the gear. Are you still eating Little Caesars oh, I'm pizza? I'm still eating it. I'm still alive. I'm yeah. still alive. It's, it's still going in. <laughs> it's still going you in. deserve a sponsorship by them. I still do. It's been, a, it's been a full year now, and I still don't have one. I still How don't have one. How much Little Caesars pizza do you eat a week? Be honest. Crazy bread included crazy bread included yeah i mean i'm gonna i i usually try to get the crazy bread with the hot and ready sometimes it'll be a just a hot and ready by itself Mm -hmm. so like i'll alternate so it'll be like just a hot and ready and then the next time i go i'll get a hot and ready and crazy bread i'd say about two but if i'm including the crazy bread there's a lot of (laughs) there's a lot of just little caesar's bread that i'm consuming at that point yeah um now because we have this in common um gilbert yes have you there's a little caesar's there i think off warner oh yeah 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 that's have a, you been to that one? I have definitely been to I that one. I had a bad experience there. Oh no! Wait, what was the? Bad? Well, because I walked in there, and oh. um, because they had a deal. I don't know if it's still going on, but a whole large pepperoni pizza for four ninety nine. Oh yeah, that's the deal. And, yeah, that's, it's a that's deal. The deal. So <laughs> I had my cash. I had my cash, and I go, can, "Can I get a large? Can I get one of those largest?" And she goes, "Yeah." And then she was kind of being weird, taking my money. She was like, "You know, like, like, like abruptly, like just." <laughs> All right. Give, was this give a Little the, Caesars? Are you yeah, sure you to do yeah, I wasn't robbing a bank or anything. Okay, all right. But all right. I was just, all right, that's kind of weird. And then I go home, present the pizza to my mom. It was a little cold. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to be careful sometimes. The thing about Little Caesars is they range a lot from location to location. Yeah. There's definitely like some prime, some choice Little Caesars yeah. and and there's some there's some janky ones there's yeah. some janky ones. You miss franchise. How, how, how's the family? I mean, you, They're great. When's the last time you were back there? Oh my goodness! I don't think I've actually been back since we talked last. It's been a. Gotta go back and I gotta family. go back. The problem is, it got started. I was gonna go back for the summer, then I forgot that. Uh... You're busy. Oh, I yeah. wish I could say that. I was just. It was just really hot. No, I'm just saying you're busy now. I know you're. <laughs> oh yeah. I know you're constantly working on music. I'm always that's working why on I love stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I was. I was like, yeah, we gotta get him back for part two. Okay, uh, we this also, is dope. Um, because this was a long time ago, but after your episode, didn't we go to Not Scary Farm? Yes. Oh, my God. I'm so glad that this is happening again now yeah. because it's like it's that season again. It's spooky season. Okay, so I'm ready I, to go I, to I, another I, haunted I house. I to hit you up because oh, I had man. a good time with you. Shout out was, to Ray and Diego. That was so much my fun. My girl. Um, <laughs> something happened there. Yeah, it got yeah. a little, it got a little uh, uh, it racy one, for you for it, a second. It was one of the haunted mazes. Yeah, and was, I want to clear my name. No, that's good. That's I want to clear Let's my name. Go so in basi- positive. So basically, can you? Do you remember <laughs> what's your memory like? Was okay, my memory's end? a little foggy. It's not. Yeah. It's maybe not the best place and I'll to tell form. You my version of. It. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, okay. So my version of it. So I'm chilling, or as chill as you can possibly be in, a, in a haunted in house. Yeah, we're yeah. waiting. Yeah, we're <laughs> waited about two hours. We waited in line for a very long time. Yeah. Um, so much so that you forget you're waiting in line for a haunted house. It's like, oh, this is, sick. Let's give them uh, some context. It's not Scary Farm. Yes. It's not Berry Farm, but it, they change it to not Scary Farm in which October. Is, which is horrible. Yeah. It's horrible because just the, the term not scary, if you don't know Knott's Berry, it sounds like it. it's a, it's like a like a misnomer. I Was mean, it scary, though? It was stressful. It was stressful. <laughs> I guess yeah. what they call it stress farms. Yeah. No one wants to come to like anx- the anxiety houses. but Yeah. But we got inside the the haunted house and was it the first one or the second one? 
I don't remember. I feel like it was the second one because we had like been seasoned by the time we yeah, got to this. We one. got we were there like late. A, yeah. Yeah. And we went into the second one and. Yeah, well, Knott's Berry Farm. Okay, oh, right. so Knott's Berry Farm. That's Craig. Thanks, Just Craig. Assume everybody Knott's knows Berry what that Farm is. is similar to Disneyland. I think that um, Disneyland wins over I, Knott's in a way. Very close. The- very close. Yeah. <laughs> they have the Star Wars going for it too now. So. They got Star Wars and cars yeah. and. When yeah. growing up, when I was there, when I went there as a kid, their main roller coaster was Montezuma's Revenge. It's the one that has the loop. It has the loop, and then it goes up, and then you go down backwards, back into the loop. Oh, word up. Okay. Yeah. That's a good. That's um, but I think Knott's can't compete with Disney. No, no, they definitely yeah, can't. Yeah. But I mean, Knott's is, is more affordable. Yeah. And they have, sorry. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> and they have We're going to get your music, but this is They have fun. the jars. No, 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 this yeah, is great. They have yeah. the, the Knott's. Because most people that don't know about Knott's Scary Farms at least knows about Knott's, like, jam, like yeah. the preserves. They have, like, mm. berries and preserves. And really, I don't understand why their second thing was roller coasters, why they were like, oh, let's make jelly and jam, and yeah. then... Oh, they have those um cookies, too. Right. So those it was the third thing. My mistake. with raspberry. <laughs> There's raspberry and it's a blueberry in the middle. Like, stuffed into the cookie. Yeah, they're shortbread cookies. It's like a weird, like, Fig Newton They're delicious, thing. by the way. They're very good. Yeah. You can purchase them in the amusement park. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's go back to the park and to uh, some of the employees there. Um. The Okay. <laughs> Yeah, they are. Uh, it's it's not scary farms. So and so. they want to scare you, and sometimes they're a little aggressive. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> so am so. I. We go into a haunted house, and I was chilling. I was doing my little juke and jive. I have yeah. like this move where I squat and I pretend to be oh, super yeah. we scared. We had army formation. Yeah. We were so like, like okay, man. if you give them the scream and you squat, usually they will move on. Mm-hmm. Usually they're like, ah, I got him. Mm-hmm. And so I was doing that, but there is one particular scarer that was very tenacious oh yeah and was not satisfied with the screams presented and 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 <laughs> i was gonna i wouldn't have and display the move aggressively you know kind of got in yeah and a very normal human reaction would be to present a palm in yeah, a, in a I, very yeah, in a safety a, like i did stop like a motion. jackie chan like but this I, is the thing is that I don't know if you guys realize Ilani was right next to me. Yes. So I'm trying to. It's a it's a very human react, thing. It's a reactionary Jackie Chan defensive defense. It's a defensive open palm. palm. Yeah, it's an open palm. It wasn't like hey get the, like that. It was like oh because this guy and I'm gonna add on to some of the other employees just walking around the amusement park as well. So I hit I went oh and then I, I end up hitting him right here. I, okay, and shooting you a little bit of bail, yeah. he had a very big monster mask on. You came into contact with the mask, and then yeah, and then <laughs> and then he was this far away from me. Yes. So I understand they're supposed to scare you, but that's like kind of taking it over the edge when he got you're in. physically. He got in there. He got in there, and his reaction wasn't that pleasant. His reaction wasn't pleasant because the the defensive palm did yeah. come into Boom. contact. There was yeah. contact, mm-hmm. which. I did witness, but it was defensive contact. <laughs> and then I thought, sick, let's move on. And um, no, he wouldn't he, he wouldn't let us move on. No, he, he was going to report me to the president he, of Not Scary Farm. Yeah, he wanted to call people. He was he was he was threatening me. He's like, "It's on camera, man." He did say that. It's uh, on, I got you on camera, man. You struck me. And I'm like, "Was that a part of the scare? Was that just was he was No, no, no. He, <laughs> he, 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 no. Was, Do people threaten litigation in the that haunted was, houses that was now? The moment like, where he got out of character into his real personality. He's not very pleasant. Yeah, man. and so what? I forgot. It's all a foggy. It was the last scare of the the house. We yeah, well, and then we we just went off. Yeah, we were done with the house now. But he did pursue us for a little while, not in like a cool monster pursuit way, but no, he but was just talking in a legal, in yeah, a legal way, in a very very there litigious. There was like legal talk. It was a lot. I'm going to get you, man. <laughs> and it was like there was still all of the like the horror sounds playing. And I was just like, well, this is weird. Yeah. Do you want to go to let's go to Universal Studios? Instead. Oh, you want to Universal, do that. Universal this time. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, saw yeah. that there's like a Stranger yeah, Things we'll on the house. Yeah, we'll do the Stranger Things this mm. time. Yeah, we won't do the nuts. 
Oh, that's going to be so to. fun. Unless, does uh, Six Flags Magic Mountain, uh, are, do they offer something Halloween? Because their roller coasters are Their roller amazing. coasters are amazing. Yeah. I think maybe somebody might walk around and yeah. scream at you, but there's no actual haunted houses. Okay. I want to get off the not scary farm. One added thing is the people yeah. walking around. Did you notice the ones with the spikes? On their yeah. shoes. Yeah. Yeah. And there were some close calls there. What you want to add on to that? That as was far okay. As the stuff they were doing. To... They were like running and sliding and sliding on... with these knife like yeah. uh, shoes on the spikes like knives and getting this close to all kinds of. <laughs> Do you remember I'm that? Sorry. Yeah. It Do you was remember just, that? It was very bizarre because at a certain yeah. point we had sat down and we're no longer and part we were observing. of. We were just watching them. Uh, they how they're acting. Yeah, it was yeah. wild. It was kind of bizarre. They they come out of their like little green rooms and <laughs> <laughs> they come back from lunch break yeah. and just start scaring people. So, you know, this is not we're not knocking knots. If you know, you could still go and have fun. Just don't get too close to the amusement park workers. Yeah. Um expect um Be so, careful of the defensive palm. Yeah. Be careful of the defensive palm. What was that last there was one really good roller coaster, Night Rider or something or <gasps> Oh crap. Do you remember, do you yeah. remember that? Do, do, I don't remember do, what it was do, called. Do. I don't remember what it was called, but that was, that was I wanted good. to get on it again because it, it was like the park was closing. That was like the last mm -hmm. ride we had. That was that so was, good. When I was riding it, it was impressing me like as it went on. I'm like, this is a legit roller coaster. It's scary. And it kept feeling like it was going to end, but it yeah, didn't. There was like more and more. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So Night Rider or something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Knott's does have good rides. Definitely do the rides. Okay, we have to. Okay, this is the ten minute mark. I, well, this is a uh, a moment to our sponsor Keeps. Now a word from our sponsor Keeps. Why Keeps? Stop worrying about hair loss and start taking action today. Two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35 years old. The good news, with today's advancements in science, Keeps offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. You used to have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now, thanks to Keeps, you could visit a doctor online and get medication delivered to your home. No more waiting rooms and no more pharmacy checkout lines. Get doctor atten doctor's attention and discreet dr drug delivery all from the comfort and privacy of your own home. Prevention is key and keeps treatments really work. They are up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. The sooner you start using keeps, the more hair you'll save, so act fast. Many men even experience hair regrowth with Keeps treatments. Let that sink in. Many men even experience hair regrowth with Keeps treatments. Okay? So if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Stevie. That's K-E-E-P-S dot C-O-M slash S-T-E-E-B-E-E. -E -E. That's keeps.com slash Stevie. K-E-E-P-S dot C-O-M slash S-T-E-E-B-E-E. E to receive your first month of treatment for free. Check it out. And we're back. <laughs> okay, I love how that works. So, so I want to get to your music. I'm constantly watching you. You're oh, always sick. you're always working on stuff. Um, always working. What was the latest thing you saw? It was it a meme or something? This guy's is calling for cops. Oh my like, god! Cops, I uploaded that like cops. five hours ago. You're really on top of stuff. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I'm yeah. like on the way but, here. So where did? Because I watched. I just watched stuff like like World Star. Yeah. Type videos. So where'd you get? Let's describe. I'm not describing it correctly. It's <laughs> a video that was like. Um, Pretty viral as far as... It was as pretty viral. It's a like guy. a man on the MTA, like, screaming for the police. Yeah, and then he's like, please, come. <laughs> like, help. Help. Please, help. Come. Help. And then you added... 
I like made a song out of it. Yeah, you it was just stuck music. in my head. Yeah. So what gave you? Is this new? Something new? This you're is. Doing? It's newer. Like sometimes I'll just get like uh, I'll get like a creative bug, but I won't want to make an entire song. Mm -hmm. So I'll like go online and just look for like some funny video. Mm -hmm. Usually there's something funny. Yeah. And, like, and I'm like, can I make I a song it. out of this? Is there any way I can like auto tune this to make like a cool little tune? I love it. And that one was just. I literally sat like I walked to. I woke up in that mor that morning and I kind of looped the video and I made some like chords and I recorded my hands mm -hmm. doing it and then I went to like a boba place and I just like edited the video Whoa, on like so hit cool. film and then put it out today. You, that you did it that fast? Yeah, yeah, so, it was chill. So when 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 you when you're working on something like that, is it like do you, is it just you're just making it you're just doing it on the spot or do you have an idea then you sometimes i'll have an idea but it's a the chords it's a lot of like yeah i mean laying down a lot of chords and i'm like recording the whole thing so it usually ends up being like 30 minutes of video but i'm just recording and like doing a lot of stuff and then when i strike something that kind of works i'm like oh yeah. that was good like Amazing. let me go back and like chop that up and yeah. like use that and then build on it and then what so so on top of all that do you have a new album or like something you're working on on top of that so yeah to speak? can we talk a little bit about that and so this summer I put out um, two new like uh, mixtapes that are connected. The cool. um, one's called Quick Breath, which is more like up, upbeat, positive, mm -hmm, fun, mm -hmm. danceable music, and then the other one's called Ego Death, and it's very ambient, chill. I like that cinematic. title. How'd you come up with that? Um, they're ego like ego death. They're part of the same thing, and so like Quick Breath, Ego Death was supposed to represent the the cycle of. Like, because I have really bad anxiety. And so it was like my anxiety attacks where yeah, it's like the quick breath you. thing of like being short of breath and this ego death of like just kind of letting go of like your ego and like pulling back from things and being like, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not the main character. Like everything's yeah, going to yeah. go on. And so it's like that cycle. I like that attitude, man. I, I try to. More, I think more people should be like that. More people should. More I think, people should. I think we're in an age now where we're uh, the kids are so consumed with technology yeah. to the point where it's like their own reality show. They're like constantly it's like a lot. looking at themselves and checking their phone and adjusting their hair. It's easy to slip into. I went yeah. recently, I just drove up to Mount Wilson. It's where's, like, where's that located? It's uh North of Pasadena. There's like an observatory up okay, there. It's okay. really, really nice. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And I drove up there kind of just, for no reason. I was just like following the roads. I was like, I've never been up in the mountains. I always see them from my yeah, home. Yeah, I want to yeah. like go up there and see what's happening. It's mm -hmm. like beautiful. And the thing is living in LA, sometimes you get so consumed with like the technology, like you're saying that you forget like, oh, it's actually like a really wild, pretty place we live in. Yeah. And sometimes I wish everybody else could do that. You know. Like, yeah. Um, now, what are, what kinds of gear and equipment? Have you gotten some new pieces of gear? Like, are you using new I have. programs? Like, let, let's talk about I have. That. I got a... What are you working with now? I got a uh, Yamaha MX-61, what which is, is like, it's like a white uh, a workstation keyboard. So it's got a lot of cool sounds on, like violins and stuff like that. And so I'm using that to make a lot of music. Is it a MIDI kind of controller? No, it's like got everything built into it. So oh, it's, it's like pretty big. It's not a MIDI. It's a keyboard. Yeah, it's like a keyboard. And so I got that mm -hmm. and it's and it's pristine white. It's like comes in white. All of my oh, new live awesome. stuff I'm like yeah. obsessed with white mm -hmm. gear. And then the other thing I got was a microcorg which oh, also cord. comes in white. I got like a microcorg S. And it has a like a mic on it so you can use a vocoder to oh, like sing into it and it like so cool. turns yeah. your voice into chords. And since I'm not a natural born singer or anything, I don't think I don't know what anybody is, but yeah. I'm not super confident with my voice, or at least I wasn't. But you you could do it. Exactly. I could do it. Yeah. And like even just singing into it and like hitting certain chords with like it's taught me about like harmony. Yeah. And so now like my bedroom is just like a, a computer and like all these keyboards set up and I just like get lost like messing around in there. Yeah, it's yeah. So much fun. Are you sponsored by Yamaha? I am sponsored by Yamaha. Which is dope. So shout which out is to, really dope. Shout out to Yamaha. Yeah. You know, keep making the good gear. And sending it this way. Keyboards. And keep so they just do that your way? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, so that nice. So that was really nice. Um, what would the value be like if you were to buy that at Guitar Center? Um, I think it's like $800. It's, so that's a... That's nice. You're sponsored. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was dope. Yeah. What are you recording on? What I, program? I still use FL Studio. I'm like well, locked explain into that. What is that? Is that a FL Studio? It's like it's one of the premier. It's one, yeah. Recording. It's one of the premier. It's super old. It's not Pro Tools. It's not Pro Tools. It's diff it's, it's 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 above GarageBand though, right? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's like yeah. if there's GarageBand that comes like free with a Mac. Yeah. GarageBand. It's Band. like 
Fruity Loops and uh, Ableton are kind of in here. Yeah. And then Pro Tools will be up here somewhere yeah. where like, you're like recording and, like pop stars on and, and stuff. then where's yours located within that? Mine's like tied with Ableton. Whoa, it's tied with Ableton. Yeah, it's really nice. Is it's it really hard? nice. Is it? Because I, uh, you know, I have Ableton on this. I don't know how to use it. Oh, I have see, no idea. I think Ableton's amazing. I don't know what to do. I think Ableton's amazing. However, since I've like been using FL Studio for so long, like it just looks like nonsense to me when I look at it. Like the user interface makes no sense to me, and I know it makes sense. It just doesn't to me. Well, it's from left to right, right? There's yeah. Wa- there's a wave, right? And it's like very, it's very, it feels very cold. What do, you, what do you mean by that? It's so weird. Because Fruity Loops is... Fruity Loops doesn't... I, I love... I remember Fruity Loops early 2000. Like, yeah. I was using Fruity it's Loops. It's super colorful. You can slide anything oh, anywhere man. you want. It's the almost like using... powerful sounding. Yeah. yeah. And it's like almost like using MS Paint, where you can kind of just like throw things wherever, mm-hmm, and it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. And like Ableton is a little bit more serious, like where it's like, no, things have to make sense. You can't just do anything. I like, thought you could just cheat on it, and it'll loop everything for you. It'll put oh. it in the right octave, or... No? No. Okay, you have to. You got to try still. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so what are the differences between Pro Tools and the program you're using? Does Pro do Pro Tools offer more plugins? Offers more plugins and I feel like Pro Tools is like more geared towards somebody that has like a huge actual studio setup. Yeah, I don't know. Cuz like I mean, FL Studio, I'm like on my laptop in, in a boba shop. Yeah. yeah. You can't do that. Like Pro Tools is more so like, okay, we got to plug things into this. It's like built for like hardware. Yeah. So the the songs you because you have songs on Spotify. I do. So this, those songs you recorded on that program? I did. It sounds crisp, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> no, it does. not because no, like... we heard it in the car. Like, we heard your wow. latest stuff, and I'm like, wow, that sounds really clean. I'm glad, because yeah. that was like, I remember being a kid and, like, listening to music, and then always thinking, like, oh, well, they're using, like, real things, and I'm using toys, and that's why my stuff sounds bad, and their stuff sounds good. Yeah. And then I remember, like, a... I don't remember whose track it was. Maybe it was like an Afrojack track or a Calvin Harris track. And somebody was like, oh, this was made in Fruity Loops. And I was like, nah, it can't be. Because my stuff sounds like garbage and this stuff sounds good. How can, how can it be made with the same program? Yeah. They're like, oh, you just got to get better, guy. Like, I'm sorry. So there are recording tricks. Yeah, definitely. To make it sound more like ready for the radio or yeah. the car, right? There definitely are. I'm the opposite. I, the worse it sounds, I like it. It is I, good. I it's like got like hiss- this like punk rock sound. No, I just like, like the distortion. But, <laughs> but but I keep forgetting that I, not everyone want, like nowadays kids want to hear you know oh, it, yeah. like just perfect. Yeah, I'm like somewhere in the middle. I'm yeah. like I can't get that like that Katy Perry like crisp clean Zed sound. Yeah. But I mean I'm 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 somewhere in the middle. Um, are 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 you? Aware that Carol, Carol Benito is performing? Yes. Are you going to the concert? Is it sold out? I don't know. but If uh, it's not sold out, I'm going. Okay, yeah, because I, <laughs> cause I was going to say maybe we could all go as a group. Yeah, I'm super um, down to go. Because, you know, uh, my, my homegirl Leilani is opening as well. Oh, no way. Really? Yeah. So Yo, Leilani's I actually didn't know. Performing, Carol, Carol Benito. Okay. Yeah. I mean, don't you have history? Yeah, okay. yeah. Ex- they were all talk- around the same yeah, thing. Let, let's talk about that history. Um, explain what Caro Caro Bonito is. Caro Caro Bonito is a trio. Um, it's it's three people and like one vocalist. They're kind yeah, of poppy. Female vocalist. Yeah, female vocalist. Pop. Kind Pop, of. cutesy, but not always. Like sometimes it's more, it's got like more of their later stuff has this cool like synth wave 80s vibe sometimes to it that's their new sound yeah that is their, their new old sound. stuff's poppy like, super poppy trampoline. yeah Jump, flamingo trampoline. Yeah. and so like that like yeah. that that was their thing and so they were kind of very integral in that really cute like uh caro caro bonito bowen mark mm-hmm. redito these are like some of those so that's that circle that's that, that was that circle that i was part of you're a part of that yeah and we're all still you like cool with each other there, dude. oh yeah i have to go Cause I'm sure you Mark's gonna be, be there on too. That bill, dude. That would be wild. Straight up. I should be. You on that should bill. be third back up. <laughs> I think so. But yeah, that would be cool. So I'm definitely go, gonna go. We'll, we'll, we'll go backstage and we'll have a talk. To yeah, I'm like, why am I not Carol, on this? Carol Benito, be like, I'll just hey, bring my stuff. Omni, like, I'm sure it was a mix up. I'll bring my keyboards and like we can get me on there. You know what tripped me out? I was at I was um at Uniqlo clothing store, the one in um Third Street in Santa Monica. Ah, yes. Just shopping, looking at stuff, and guess what I hear on? They're they're getting play everywhere. They're playing Caro Caro Bonito yeah. in Uniqlo. Yeah. And I look at Alani, I go, isn't that your friends? And we paused, listened, 
And yes, we were right. It's so wild. And that that's when I knew, oh, they're like they definitely yeah, yeah, leveled they're, up. They're they definitely like, leveled up. We talked it was about a thing. The, we talked about this. Remember, we we're a know, year ago. We talked about that. This at Not Scary Farm. Oh we, yeah, we were in line. It was like the third, la, the wow. third to the last ride, and we're talking about like their progression. Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. So I just find that. What it's do you wild. think happened? Like, how did how does an artist come from here? I honestly have no idea. To <laughs> to being played. In a like a department because it was huge store. and it was fast, like that. Yeah, it was very fast. And it they wasn't... were they had a following, but now they have like there's people outside you yeah. guys, you guys is eclectic, exactly a collective that know about them. There's like people that love Carol Carol Bonita that maybe don't know Trampoline and like don't know Flamingo. But They're... that's those were the main yeah original songs or whatnot. It's really interesting. I you see that happen a lot sometimes where like a an artist will shift or they will just have like a a huge like exponential rise. And yeah. sometimes there's like more obvious uh or surface level opaque reasons for that where it's just like oh i get it now they signed to this label so it makes sense or they had this song with this huge act and now they're here but honestly it was really organic i mean yeah. tiktok a lot of people a lot of kids were using uh carol carol Bonita songs in tiktoks and i'm not going to attribute all of it to that but that Whoa, definitely that's crazy man kids like tiktok i'm not yeah. really on tiktok i'm like a grandpa as far as tiktok yeah, i don't even want to jump in that pool <gasps> oh my god yeah. uh, well is that a i don't really know game? what i'm talking about is that a is that a video it's like game? a oh no it? it's I gonna be no, like two I'm grandpas so talking about this thing because I, I don't really i don't really have well i, I am I'm, it's I'm, like a it's I'm like close to a grandpa. it's like vine remember vine yes imagine if vine <laughs> sorry so it's how we might not well, be hold up. it's an app <laughs> it's where an you app can make videos where you can make videos you can put like little probably thing like people are do- making a lot of really funny really cool Emojis creative content with and it stuff yeah it. and you can add music to it like they have like music built into it to where you can add this song to it and so for a long how time, did carol carol bonito play into the tiktok movement that i don't know because i don't know how they became part of like the library because it was like people were using carol carol bonito they songs must have, um they must have agents and um managers and they definitely are they, taken care of they are right yeah, yeah, yeah aren't yeah. they based out of the uk as well they are. They're from London. I, I, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You gotta talk to him, man. I that gotta would talk be a to good, him. I think you should show up. At least let him know. Hey, remember me? It's like I'm <laughs> the OG of this whole. Cl- I'm one of the OGs. I should be with you. Can I want to say can that I, can verbatim. I open, can can I, got- <laughs> I open up for you guys in in Sydney, Australia? Like, hey, I've been guys, doing my craft in That's my true. room for years. I'm, I got a new Yamaha. I'm still hustling. I got th- these new songs. I'm still hustling. Just going to bring the yeah. whole catalog out. Like, hey, but it's like before they go on. I'm like, yeah. hey, I don't know if you guys remember me. Yeah. It's Omni Boy. Remember at Omni they, Boy? They, like, start dude, showing some pictures. If they, if they, they deny remember. it, they're. Yeah, you they're know, they're lying. They're, they're lying. lying. They're lying. Yeah, they remember um, me. I wanted to talk to, to you about, like, music today and how to get your. How to, like,. Monetizing, like, what are kid like you said TikTok, but what are some other ways musicians are monetizing and and making a living doing what they love to do? I think um, streaming. Wow, so streaming changed everything. Mm-hmm. Like, not even just music stream, but like uh, Netflix, like any type of media streaming changed. So licensing. Yeah, it changed how people like consume things too, and so I feel like with uh, streaming. You can get money. It's small, but you can get some revenue from streams via like Spotify, Apple mm-hmm. Music, things like that. You're on spot. You have a lot on Spotify. I have don't a lot you? on Spotify. No, do you make? Do they do? Do you monetize off? How does yes. that? How does that work? So like, you would have to go through a distributor, and there are a couple to choose from. There's a few to choose from. I go through DistroKid, and so it's kind of like I send my music into DistroKid the same way you would Bandcamp. And yeah, then I'm just on Bandcamp. Yeah. yeah, and I'm also on Bandcamp. Yeah. Bandcamp's amazing. Yeah, I hey, I shout like out it. to Bandcamp. Yeah. I love, I love their model. They take care I, of artists. Yeah, too. I like the way they just PayPal it to you, and then your fans could dir- to give you the the money directly. Yeah, and they could also like donate. Like you could just leave it open ended. This is true. Whatever they feel like, donate. You know, what I I'm like saying? that. Like I pay like what you that. want. Model is very nice. Yeah. But keep going. It's fascinating oh. to me. Yeah. So just like uh, this, uh, just like um, Bandcamp, you would send your music into DistroKid, and DistroKid would um, distribute it further to all these different platforms. You can even check the ones you want. Like maybe you only want it on iTunes, or you only want it on Amazon MP3. I but don't like iTunes for some reason. I don't like iTunes. I've either. had my past stuff on there, I, and then I remember I got a check in the mail, and oh. I was hyped. I go, "Oh my god, I got a check." 
It was for like forty two cents. Wow. <laughs> it was how much not, did the paper cost that it was I printed on? It was nothing. <laughs> I was I like opened it. I'm like I got a check, and I'm like oh. wow. It was like a couple. Cents. You hate to see it. This is a thing though. That's a thing. I mean, and, that's like one like that's like one EP sale like that. I like quadrupled like that payment right there just one yeah. little, or like one song that they could buy 99 cents off of one of my band camp songs and they like cut the they yeah, cut their partition they, out and yeah, they mail so, you something so you're saying so nowadays you have to like spread so what okay let's say you were to drop an album tomorrow yes you would obviously put it on your band camp yes then you would send it through distro kid yes and then what else i would send it through the di- distro kid and luckily distro kid um, distributes to all of those, like it, like Spotify, Amazon. Tidal, Amazon, Google. So I just kind of like check all boxes and I'm like, okay, send that out. And it'll show up. I mean, if I'm uploading it at that time, like if I uploaded it tomorrow morning, mm-hmm. it wouldn't show up on all those different platforms at the same time because they all have their own things. But if I did yeah. it way ahead of time and I chose a date, you know, I was like, oh, have it come out on Halloween, then like on Halloween on then midnight. Then you could promote yeah wisely and then and it'll go up and then monthly they send you monthly the all the money it'll aggregate all the money from all the different platforms and send it to your distro kid and then you can send it from your distro kid to like your bank or, or your paypal, PayPal and stuff like that which is how really do you nice really track the downloads it like how do you track all that like who's listening to what they song? do give you analytic they analytics. get they give you the analytics yeah which is like really really helpful sometimes it's upsetting right like i I'm don't sh- know if i try I, we've I'm all paranoid. seen a graph <laughs> you, you mentioned your anxiety I, i'm paranoid with stuff like that oh yeah because it can be all lies right yeah yeah, yeah. I, don't I, have to tell I, like, me I look at stuff like that i'm like well oh know. we want to really get into it i yeah. always think of like how much is a stream i know that's like a question nobody really likes talking about but i don't understand like how much is a stream yeah, because I we kind of know. Oh man, not really. I kind of know how much Spotify is paying me for the stream, right? Somebody did the math, and it's like point zero zero six, point zero six. Yeah. It's, but the thing is, like, I know how much I'm getting from it, but how much is it worth? How much is Spotify getting from it? Because that's like my cut, but I don't know what my cut is a cut of. Right. What if they're getting the whole meat and potatoes? I don't know how much a stream's worth. Is a stream worth yeah. a penny? Uh, I don't know. Anyway, for some re- <laughs> yeah, for some reason, hold up. This is interesting. For some reason, like, I feel like the only musicians that benefit are if you were like U two or Lady Gaga or yeah. some major major oh, artists. Yeah. Where you know what I'm the saying? The streams are they so might have substantial. Their own, like per- like personal deal with these platforms. I have no idea how much a stream's worth. That's that's all I'm saying. Like, I know that like if you have a if you have a YouTube account. And then YouTube is like, oh. Yeah, this is going on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. And, then YouTube... and I can look at the analytics. I can look at the ad yeah. revenue. I could. And I don't ha- understand half of it. <laughs> of course. I just look at, okay, where's the estimated monthly gross income? I, yeah. It's kind of around that ballpark. It is. Area. But and I, I think I just accept it. Because what am I going to do? Contact the president of Right, YouTube right. There's nothing we can say, do. Listen, you're doing, you're, you're doing me wrong. <laughs> There's nothing we can do. We're powerless on this thing. And sometimes I don't even like thinking about it because yeah. it's super sad. And it's yeah. like really weird. It's like a, But it's the same thing of like if I go to a store, if I go to Ralph's or something, and I buy a loaf of bread, yeah. I kind of just have to trust Ralph's that that's what a loaf of bread is worth unless I've seen somebody else charge less for it. I'm like, this is too much for a loaf of bread. Unfortunately, we were talking about Little Caesars. Little yeah. Caesars sells pizzas for $5. Like, let's say they had the Omni Pizza. Yes. Where it was beyond a supreme. Yes. It had, like, more toppings. Just everything. Everything. And there's... But they're just... But then at each month, they're like, here you go. And they hand you a check. This is your... This is your yeah. sales for this month. And I'm like, what well, does that mean? You don't really know unless you see the transactions of, like, I don't how know. many large pizzas are you selling? Mm-hmm. How many medium... You know what I'm saying? You're I don't have the info. It. You just have to, that, like, trust. See, that's my whole argument. Like, it's how really how do you really know what, you know, like, it, like I mean, this goes to movies or anything that creative. Anything. Anything creatively. I think with art, like, fine art, you could kind of get away with it because I think that's a different type of arena where there's a, a art space and then you have a one, these, these prints or paintings and this is what this is. And oh. I guess the... And- I guess the and art there's like prestige involved and stuff, yeah. and there's a lot going with on there. Music, anything digital like music, it's just out in the universe, and you don't, you know. Yeah, because I remember when iTunes came out, and it was like you could buy a, a track, and it was ninety nine cents. 
But if you wanted to buy the whole album, you'd have to pay more. But people could just buy a for track. For nine ninety nine, $9.99 for the whole album. Yeah. $0.99 cents for a track. For a track. Which, yeah. like, I was like, okay. And that was the first time that I and a lot of people were like, oh, a, a song is worth a dollar. A song costs a dollar. Because before that, you kind of had to buy an album if you wanted to hear the new Linkin Park song. You couldn't just go buy Crawling or Numb. Yeah, yeah. You had yeah. to buy the album. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I guess a song's worth a dollar. But nobody, somebody decided that. But, like, it wasn't like all the artists got to vote or anything. Yeah. So if someone happened to do that with you, they buy, okay, just name one song that you've done, a, a title of a song. Um, I have a song called Close Down. Okay, if someone just bought Close Down. Yes. For 99 cents. 99 cents. And that's through Spotify or iTunes, iTunes. Right? Then they, how does that work once they download it? Then you get, like, how much is that, like? 15 cents for that sale i honestly have no idea (laughs) (laughs) we need to figure this out man so here's the thing every single time i do here's what exactly what happens i can walk you through the process i wake up and i'm like i gotta get to the bottom of this and i like make my breakfast and then i sit down but you're a but you're a musician i'm a musician i see you i'm not a numbers and graph man yes so then i pull up all these analytics and it's like oh here's my spotify chart here's my uh title chart here's my apple music chart here's my Google MP3, here's my Amazon. I'm pulling up all these things, and they all have different like percentages that they're paying you because Spotify pays this per stream, but Tidal pays a penny per stream. Yeah. And it's like I'm doing so much math that I just get overwhelmed. I'm like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to release music and yeah, like let it. Yeah, yeah. Because it's so complicated. It's super complicated. Um. So does it benefit an artist to, to um, exclusively release their music on just – like one specific platform or now is it nowadays you have to just spread out to everywhere and just let it out in the universe. It's so interesting, right? Like, cause that's, I struggle with that. I would say, oh man, cause there's two arguments and yeah. And they're both, they, they both can make sense, right? If you are somebody that, you know, you have a good product and you know, there's people that want it. Maybe you're fine releasing it in one place. You're fine just being the band camp musician or the SoundCloud musician because you know people will come to you. I'm exclusively just on band camp. And right. you can bottleneck people that way. Yeah. Because like people all, and you, you can see. You can only see. get it here. Exactly. I have to be honest with you. I, my last release, it's been a while. I'm working on new stuff right now. But I generated more money. I didn't get a lot of sales, but I got way more than my past going through iTunes. And back then I oh. released my stuff through CD Baby. Oh, heck so yeah. do you I remember, remember those CD days? Baby. So you would like give them, them your master copy, CD Baby. Yeah. Then, then CD Baby would distribute it to all these platforms, similar to um the 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 distro the kid, distro the kid do. does. But but the, but then the the most the highest check that I got was like forty two dollars. Oh, from or, CD Baby. From CD Baby. But through Bandcamp, I got a lot more than that. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, so I don't. I'm just. I'm so just, you can you can bottleneck people, right? So that yeah, is a. It's called a, bottlenecking. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. like everybody has to come through, and so it's like there's there's a dense amount of people. Yeah. But there are people that are just like you know what I know that there's somebody somewhere who only listens to music through Pandora. So I'm going to try to my, distribute my to every- n- My stuff's not on there. Yeah, and so neither was mine. I, I'm going to use my mom for an example because yeah. my mom uses Pandora. My yeah. mom does not listen to my music, but my mom uses Mongo Pandora. <laughs> she still has my CDs, old season. Yeah, shrink, just collecting dust wrap. some year. No, what is that? Wrap. What in is that? Uh, anyways, yeah, I know. The, so I'm like putting my stuff on Pandora to get to that. Maybe that one person that only uses Pandora, maybe now they can hear my music. And so it is widening my net. But... I think success can be found both ways, right? Like you go everywhere. 7-Eleven is everywhere. McDonald's is everywhere. And they're amazing companies that have accomplished accomplished a lot. But so is In-N-Out Burger. Mm -hmm. And it's like not a lot of places. It's like a few places, but it's not most of the country. But they're doing, if you go, if we walked to In-N-Out right now, there would be a line of cars going into the street from the oh, drive-thru. Oh, I know. No doubt. No doubt. It's always and it's like, like everybody has to come here to get it. So yeah. I think that you can get success both ways. But I think that um maybe if you're just starting out yeah the best way would be to put yourself in most places as possible yeah you're just right you're like, right you're right but um, like yeah yeah, you, yeah i want to bring another analogy you brought up 7-eleven so back in the 7-11. day they don't have this anymore but by the slurpee section they mm-hmm. had a specific kind of licorice it was like the slurpee straw 
It was like a sour oh. licorice that you could only yeah. get at 7-Eleven. And you know what I'm talking about. I know exactly what you're delicious. talking about. <laughs> it was good. So I'm going to use licorice as an example. Okay. So let's use red vines. Red vines would be like your music being like on all platforms. Yeah, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. But Bandcamp is like 7-Eleven where you have to go there to get that specific type of licorice and you could only go there yeah are some people willing to make that drive some people no some people yes Absolutely. but i'm willing to have it exclusive like that at least I, and then not only that i could at least keep tabs on that one store like talk it, to the manager hey, on that yeah one store. also the the thing about that is like you know that those people care Right. Yeah. They didn't just happen they, to so be stumbling. They want to support you yeah, as an artist. They, go, they we came believe the distance. in your music. We want to support you as an artist. We want you to continue creating, and that's what it's all about. It know? is. It is. Yeah. Um. So as far this is interesting, man. I'm sorry. I mean, you're one of like we haven't really talked this ex- like in depth about. No. But it's like we have to talk about this, like, because music's constantly changing. The way it's presented and put out is constantly changing. Always. Do you think in the future it's gonna like go right to your, like you'll have some kind yeah, of yeah, microchip? Yeah. It'll go beep and then it'll play in your right ears. Like, exactly. It's be crazy. And you'll be or able to you'll have it at all times. But you won't own any of it, by the way. You won't own any music. See that I have <laughs> see I have a problem. That see that's another problem. Yeah, that's is, a big thing. That's a problem. Is, so you're saying once your stuff's out there, the ownership's dead, unless you're like. I think that just people who listen to music won't own music anymore. And I think that there are some good things about that. There are some oh, bad things about that. Oh, you're saying for consumers, they're yeah. not going to own. They're going to be, I listened to this for a month. I want to listen exactly. to something Exactly. So that's where we're going? I think that's where we're almost at. I think that a lot of people don't own albums. And I think that even when I release music, except for the Bandcamp people, because they're buying, at least they're buying an MP3. Yeah. Most people don't have an album. And I, there is a song, there was like a Kendrick song that was on. He's amazing, by the way. He's, a, he's incredible. Yeah, he's incredible, yeah. And it was on the Black Panther soundtrack, and they yeah. changed one of the verses on amazing. it. Kanye also did this, yeah. like changing music I, I after it's out. I love Kanye. He's, he's a great producer as well. And he was changing music, yeah. and I missed, like I was like, dang, I missed the older version of this song that had this verse on it before it was changed yeah. and updated. But since I didn't own it, it's just gone for me, you know? like. But back in the day, that would be like a B-Sides. Exactly. You would, you would just go to the record store. Yeah. And go buy the B-sides or the single and be like, boom, I got it. Now it's like a replacement. Like if, yeah. if I go onto SoundCloud right now, I could replace my songs with other waveforms. And a lot of people that didn't go to Bandcamp again, they wouldn't tell, they're couldn't just couldn't like, tell oh, the, difference. the song is gone, I guess. Like I Omni up, re-upload this song. And I'm like, didn't, don't you have it? And they're like, no, I didn't, I didn't buy it. You know, oh, I've just been streaming. No. So it's a thing. I think that people are going to not own music like going forward. I think that it'll be like a special thing. Yeah, it's like people yeah. owning like... I still like buy books and stuff like that. I have like a bookshelf. Yeah, I still like listening to albums or at least three or four songs on specific albums. You know. Yeah. So are we in today's age? These kids are they? They're in a different culture where it's not even. They don't even know what an album is, huh? It's different. They use the word album, but it's definitely different. In what ways? They just don't see it the same way. You like an album isn't always like a physical thing. People be like listening to an album. But, like, I remember buying an album and, like, the jewel case and, like, taking out the booklet and just, like, reading I, everything I me could. Me, too. Turning liner it over. notes. Yeah. Who's liner the shout notes. Outs? Oh, my God. I talked about liner notes yeah, recently liner to somebody, notes. and they asked me what they were. And I was like, it's like little, like on the booklets, like, special things and, like, crediting That's people. That's the and shout out the homies. Yeah. And they're like, I can't find that on Spotify. And I'm like, oh, I guess you're yeah. right. So I'm glad you brought this up because <laughs> back then you would listen. You would open the liner notes, and that's how you discovered other music. Because a lot of yeah. the a lot of the shout outs were other musicians or you know like their know, buddies. Yeah, they'd yeah. be like, "Oh, who's this guy?" Because you really would see cool. the same name in some of the liner notes. Like, well, who is this guy? Yeah. Then you would re- you know, there's no, there's no digging for stuff anymore. It's like you know that's what I don't like. Like back, um, that's why I kind of I still dig like the culture where like a lot of these uh, record producers or DJs they still go by physical vinyl. Because it's kind of tr- yeah. like a treasure hunt. It really is. There's no treasure hunt now. Because a lot of that stuff that they're digging through and finding isn't on Spotify. It's just kind of only a physical, it's like this exclusive physical thing. Yeah. Which is really interesting. I think there is something special about that, though, don't you think? As oh, there as absolutely like is, yeah. Going to some kind of store and finding B-sides or finding this rare album. Oh, yeah. 
So what? Where? Where does Amoeba, um, uh, Amoeba. stand during all? Because I heard they're moving. Yeah. I used to work there. Shout out to Amoeba. No way. All so, right. Yes. Yeah, so, oh well, I got fired. So oh, oh, I owe, up. Yeah, yeah, no, I'll go in the. Uh, I owe them an official apology. Um, well, I'm sober now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I took the, I took my job for granted. So, oh, that's fair. Yeah. We all have. So, but um, so so their whole platform is collectibles, rare, you know, like B sides, rare yeah, albums. But yeah. now they're resorting to t-shirts right i've noticed more yeah that they have to because that's where the money is right it is yeah t-shirts stickers so what are they going to do once all the because fi- we're heading towards that already i mean we're we're close to getting robots walking robots craig just showed me there's like a walking dog about to like what was that robot craig <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I love atmosphere. that video. Yeah. Oh, I love those so, dogs. Yeah, there's, they're there, gonna kill us, but yeah, I do gonna, love. I them. told him that the, the <laughs> grenade launchers are gonna be on the top of those things. But um, <laughs> as far as like physical yeah. copies of stuff, that's gonna be. I think yeah, because like, okay, non-existent. Because, I mean, video stores, it's like when you walk, when you drive by a video store, it's always just like, oh, yeah, video stores or like how Blockbuster went away. I was thinking about like Netflix because there's there are certain like Netflix right licenses a lot of Mm -hmm. movies. So you can go on there and you can watch, I don't know, an Avengers film. Mm -hmm. But there's also stuff that's only on Netflix. So whenever I see that stuff, I'm like, oh, there's like no there's no like physical version of that. Yeah. It's almost like if a book came out, but it was like on the Kindle only. Like it's like we never yeah. actually printed it. It's just and like just in this neighborhood, there used to be a DVD video store called Twenty Four Seven Video, right where that seven the Seven Eleven is around it here. It was Twenty Four Hours. Um, that was just the name of it. But dude, I would go there and I would find some great <laughs> movies, man. You know, I, bet. I would go in there. I bet. I miss that. I miss looking at the cover, looking at the back side of the cover. Oh, this is great. Oh, who's this director? Oh, this yeah. looks like that. You know what I'm saying? So the state of music is going to be a lot different. Don't you think in the next five to ten years, a lot different? Absolutely. There's it's n- going to be different. The, like, you know, I see vinyl in... um. Barnes and Nobles and places like that. I don't see anybody like really in that area buying. Nah, I've never seen. I didn't see that. I don't see that anymore. I think it is going that way because like we definitely still have physicals of movies and there are a lot of people that still buy movies, but it's just not. I mean, it's not the huge industry it once was like DVD sales or like it's not that big of an industry because it doesn't need to be. There's so many streaming services that you can get things on. And like we just talked about, there are some pieces of media that only exist in a streamable fashion yeah like i was just watching like a (sighs) new netflix cartoon and i'm just like oh if you don't have netflix you can't watch it yeah you can't like buy the season off of like amazon and have it shipped so it's going back to what we talked about you have to go to a specific place to see a specific thing i don't like that i mean that's I but then, but that's what I'm doing with my some of my albums. You have to go to my Bandcamp to get it. But the problem, okay. So let me let me back up. Okay. It's not that I don't like that. I do like that. I don't like how many different streaming services exist it, because you're having to pay for them all. And so it's like right. if you want to, if you want to be able to consume, like before, if you wanted to be able to consume stuff, there was like paywalls with like cable television. Yeah. But if you wanted to see the movies. A lot of times for movies, it was like, if you just went to the movie theater, you could see it or went to a blockbuster. Right. But now it's like, there are um, like Netflix exclusive shows. There's Hulu shows. There's Amazon Prime shows. Disney's just re- releasing yeah, their new yeah, streaming thing. Yeah. They're going to have exclusives. And for a while, we were experiencing that same thing with music where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like Jay-Z and Beyonce and stuff like that was only on Tidal. And you couldn't listen to it on Spotify or anything else. And so people were like, crap. So you ha- you'd have to go there. Yeah. To check that out. And like, I hope we don't get to that with music. For the, right now, most people are trying to put it out everywhere. But like, I hope we don't get to that where it's like, oh, have you heard the new Kendrick album? And it's like, no. And it's like, well, you need to pay a subscription service, $15 a month to hear it, to be like in the platform that offers that. I don't know. That that seems like that's going to be annoying. I understand that model, but I wish it was kind of reversed. And going back to, because I'm, I, I'm like more for the musicians, the people that create the music. Yeah. Uh, people like you, people like I could just go on and on. But I think there should be a, a type of model like that, but where the musician 
pays like you know how you you have to pay nine ninety nine for Adobe Premiere. Yeah. Or like your website or something. But th- this yeah. is the thing. So you pay a monthly fee, but through that it disperses. And it spreads your music to the platforms you mentioned, like mm-hmm. iTunes and Amazon and all that. But then you have control of everything. Like you could see exactly what's going. You know how like your own website, you could log in. Yeah. And you could see, you could track yeah. everything going on. So I think that would be a great model because listen, the the companies will be making their money because of the monthly fee. Right. Right. The musician would have more um, ownership and more control over, because like I, going back to what we talked about, we don't know who's really downloading no our stuff and where or how much the percentage is. But this would allow the music, the musician, to track to have more um, ownership and control over all of their stuff, man. It and could that, be good. Yeah, I mean, do you think that that could work? I think it could work. But do you think that will happen? I don't think it will happen. Why? Because <laughs> I think it's. I think it's. Well, no, because that... I think it's in the interest of the artists and not the companies. And I feel like. Yeah, but then that's cap. It's kind of like the other way. Is like I'm trying to go against the. the no, I hear the you. Corporate entity. I just don't think I. This is bringing power back to the the right. artist. It was. Yeah, explain and, that. What's and title still title is another streaming service that's yeah. like owned by Jay Z. It might still be owned by Jay Z, but it pays the most per stream, and well, they like really well, try to take care so of the artist. Explain artists. the model. Like, how does it work? It's just like Spotify, but it's not Spotify. Now, how is it different than Spotify? It pays like a penny per stream, and they give you, penny. which is a lot. That is huge. A penny. Well, I don't know what the stream is worth. The stream could be worth five dollars, and I'm I feel silly saying a penny is a lot, but a penny is the most you're gonna get out of a streaming service. <laughs> Just give you a dollar. Yo, if I was getting a dollar yeah. per stream, I'd be eating so good. I I'd know. have my own little Caesars. Yeah. But no, so the <laughs> title uh, gives the artist a little bit more control so they can see all their analytics. Spotify's trying to do the same thing as well, but there's so many platforms that aren't doing that. It's just, it's like a weird arms race of streaming platforms. It's like, I feel like every month a new streaming platform comes around and. Yeah. I don't know. Could there be a future app on your phone where it benefits people like us where you could, you know, you ha- it's you open up the app and then it has all your albums and you could track what song who oh, that'd is be li- dope. you know what I'm saying who's listening to what and then uh, it's kind of like um like and, and then your PayPal is kind of connected you oh, could, you know what I'm saying yeah you know, like, you're describing so, a, yeah, you know a dope what I'm saying? thing so like once like in, in real time you mm. could see, because cause this is another problem with their model. You have to wait like six years to get a check from these you people. You do. There's a you know big I mean? lag like, on it. I, There's mean, a, I didn't know about that I, until yeah, I got it. And I, I was like, I, I got a check from, I don't even know what, from my album I did in 2003. I'm like, oh, yeah. I guess someone finally listened to this album. <laughs> but this, this app will allow you <laughs> in real time to track your downloads, who even... Uh, who's watching or looking or like looking at your songs and your that would be really nice and that would be nice i would and enjoy what about that this to to, to to add on to that what if that way you could get through that app you could get licensing where they the the major entity corporate entities could go to that app and and they could go through a library like you know you'd be on there they'd be like you know we like um this song by omni and then they could directly contact you and then it's linked in through the app where they're like hey your music's gonna be used in this scene in this independent movie directed by todd solins or whatever i think people are trying to do that because that there are things like that but not all together because there are like uh the libraries for like licensing and publishing and that's like through like ascap and stuff like that but then that's a lot of paperwork yeah and that's are you on ascap can we talk about i am on ascap so how does ascap work explain what that is ascap is just like copyright and free you get on it to like copyright your music but then they also have um agencies and capabilities to get you proper publishing and like licensing so you can like enter into things where maybe you, your song can get used in like a tv show or something which is nice and then um what how does it work as far as the like the business aspect do they take a percentage or like how does i mean yeah because you're paying for ascap how much is the ascap fee i wish i knew off the top of my head because i, I mean don't. 
believe it or not, I, I did the, oh, already? I, I was doing commercials. I did the commercials in like early 2000 and I had to, um, what, what's the, um, the actors, uh, SAG, the SAG, oh, the SAG, dope. the SAG fees were ridiculous. I somehow <laughs> called the, um, department saying I'm no longer, longer, uh, acting or doing commercial oh. acting i'm doing some other thing and i i'm i think my thing is just on hold put on hold or something like where i didn't have to pay but the fees are ridiculous i bet they are because how many shows could you, a person there's so many actors and musician whatever and don't competing. you have to like keep renewing it yeah yeah so is that the way ascap works as well no 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 no, no. i mean it's the fees aren't the fees aren't wild but you do have to renew it. How much is it? I don't remember. I want to say, oh, man, I don't even want to say a price. You don't want to say Because it. I feel like I'll be wrong. And then I'll make a fool of myself. There's but. not like a ballpark. Kind it's of... under 100. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, and, then do you, and then how much paperwork's involved? Like, do you have to, can you do it online? Or? You can do it online, which oh. is nice. Okay. It's like cyber paperwork. Mm -hmm. (laughs) but you have to also consider how many other people are on ASCAP and how do you how do you stand out how does your music stand out where this film producer or this director is like I want that song in my experience it doesn't (laughs) but (laughs) I'm sure somebody's music is standing out out there but see that's where I'm trying to to figure this out like because I want I want to hear an Omni song I want to hear an Omni song in a movie yeah, I want to hear an that Omni song in a movie. Dope. That would be, be like, really you nice. Know, good for him. That'd be cool. That's the next step for me. Then you can move to Santa Monica, be by uh, the water. Yeah. You could get a little loft. A little, you could get like three bedrooms. A couple of dogs. Couple the expensive dogs. kind. The really yeah. expensive kind. The kind they have on Tumblr. Yeah. With a couple of those dogs. Maybe a Sheba. Let's uh, start plugging. Um, I want to start plugging your music, your oh, website, yeah, yeah. your uh future endeavors as far as your music projects how do how do people find you and your music um i'm omni boy on everything part two this is your second time. yeah yeah, yeah. so mm-hmm. omni boy on like twitter instagram mm-hmm. facebook spotify all everything it's mm-hmm. o-m-n-i-b-o-i i oh b-o-i sorry yes o-m-n-i-b-o-i gotcha and so I'm that everywhere. I just released two new like mixtape albums, whatever you want to call them, in there. Download those, yeah. Folks. Quick Breath and Ego Dev. How do they a... download it where you get the most revenue? I mean, Bandcamp. Go... Bandcamp what's takes your, for what's your Bandcamp? Just Omni Boy. Bandcamp Omni Boy. Band... Um, go to his Bandcamp. Don't go. Don't go, go to his Bandcamp. Else. Don't go anywhere else, and make that pledge. Yeah, for Quick Breath and Ego Dev, they're like two linked uh mixtapes and so those came out i'm i'm getting merch that's coming out this is like the first time that i've had like an official t-shirt that's going to be coming out this winter and that's good for you man wild um how do people get a shirt or yeah i'm gonna have it all set up online order it through there i want to uh, sell because like you can do that through Bandcamp, like selling like merch through Bandcamp. so i think i'm gonna do it that way and so i'm gonna do that um also, I'm working on a. I can't really talk about it that much or okay, anything. That's fine. That's fine. But I am working on the soundtrack to a game, which is dope. Because a video game. Yeah. Since last time we talked, that was like something I was trying to do, and now I'm doing it. So that's dope. It, it's happening. Yeah, it's happening. Is it Xbox, PlayStation? I can't say. Is it? A, is it like a PC game? You can't say. I can't say. <laughs> talk clean. Tell yeah. Me, can you tell me after? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We'll have like a part three after the game's yeah, part out. Three. Just like go get this. And game. then not only that, I think because time flew by somehow. Um, uh, you were on the cutting edge of innovation. What as I far do? as no, I don't know if you the way you said you were going to release your other your album. Oh yeah, 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 you, yeah. Dude, you were on. Oh, I'm still the, working. You, I, I'm oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. I'm still okay, working yeah, on that. It's gonna be things. so dope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, man, like the way you're you showed the 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 sample copies of the way you're releasing your music. It's gonna be so cool. I mean, that was like next level <laughs> futuristic. And Stay that's gonna tuned. be my first physical copy for good. Yeah, so support his band camp. Yes, Omni please. Boy. I'm always out there. Did we miss anything? What about future uh, show or tour dates? Well, I just got back actually from Korea, which oh, you was went to Korea? it was amazing. The show was amazing. The city of Seoul was amazing. 
The food was amazing. It was so good. You and like, like a kimchi chicken or what? Actually, yeah. And I I never have before. I don't. I'm dude. not a big kimchi fan. And then I went over there and I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'm here. Let me eat it. Probiotics, I, dude. I ate it and I felt good afterwards. Yeah, good. Is that why everybody's smiling dude, all the time? Probiotics like yogurt, dude. Kimchi, fermented it is? cabbage. Yeah, dude. Eat it. It's like kombucha. Is that what that? It's different. It's it's Korean. <laughs> it's Korean cabbage, bro. It was very I'm good. Glad though. He ate it. I'm it glad, was very I'm, good. I'm, I'm I was like, wow, it. this is so good. I was I wasn't expecting him to feel good afterwards. Is that why people eat it to feel good? It's just delicious. It was cool. Yeah, I didn't like it at first. We'll talk about kimchi again. Next yeah. Time. yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I just got back from Korea, so no like shows coming up super soon. I'm just trying to like mm-hmm. relax. Mm-hmm. And go to other people's shows. Carol, Carol Bonito, if you're watching this, book bring, me for the show. Bring, bring him during your next tour. Yeah, this is the OG from the collective. You remember? You remember him? <laughs> Watch, support, and book him. Okay. I want to get. You think Thank they'll you. hop on here one day if I can get one of the members? Absolutely. I could get one of them, Carol Carol. I think so, Carol Carol Bonito, you're always welcome at the Stevie Weeby show. Yeah, they're so um, nice. Okay. They're we're, nice we're, people. We're supporters. We're, you know, we're fans of the music. We bump it. I We bump their music. I listen to it a lot. A lot. I it's listen catchy. to it a lot. It's very yeah. catchy. It's very uh, I'm happy for them. They're doing oh, yeah. well. They're killing They're doing it. well. They They're doing well. Yeah. We've talked Bay about area. it at Not Scary Farm. <laughs> or we won't go to Not Scary Farm. We're, let's plan... Um, um, Universal Studios. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Let's actually start planning that after this because it's or raging oh, it's water, going down. Or raging waters. <laughs> what is that? What is that? It's a water park. Where they have a wave pool. I mean, we'll talk after. <laughs> we'll talk. No, 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 no. We won't go what? to raging waters. No, there's <laughs> there's water slides. Where? Uh, it's raging waters. They don't have Halloween stuff, do they? No, but it's just we could go there to the water park. No, they just like oh. put like green dye in the water. That could be spooky. Okay, well, I no, I didn't say they had a Halloween theme water park. I said we'll just go to Raging. Where waters. is it? I don't know. It's somewhere in California. We'll talk <laughs> after about Raging Waters. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm just okay. Okay. Up with this stuff. Okay. Okay. So, did we miss anything? Um, Dude, that flew by. I feel like. We just, yeah, oh, I feel man. bad. There's like a lot well, of stuff to get to. I'm sure. Here. Yeah. Anytime, oh yeah. Anytime you want to come here. I'm just gonna crash the podcast. I'm gonna become <laughs> like a reoccurring that. guest. You could do that. I mean, your piano skills itself yeah. should just take over. Yeah. I like play the same chords every week. So yeah. do I. That's why people haven't like, figured it out yet. Yeah. All my songs are the same four chords. It's okay. It's, uh, <laughs> hey, 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 as long as it sounds good. Yeah, true. People okay. like it. People like it. It sounds good. <laughs> it sounds great. Um, okay, so that's it. Um, make sure um, you you go to Keeps. Stop worrying about hair loss and start taking action today. Okay, um, we have a Patreon attached to this show. Go to <gasps> patreon.com slash Stevie Weeby. Did you want to plug? Do you have a Patreon? I forgot about my Patreon. Yeah, you plug, your Patreon? <laughs> plug your Patreon. It's just well. Patreon. It's just Omniboy Patreon. You can uh, find me there. Pa- patreon.com slash Omniboy. So yes. Pledge to either or. Okay. But we definitely need the support, right? What yeah, it does okay. help. It, it does, does help. help. It definitely helps. Yeah. Um, well, there's a new website. Uh, attached to the show so just go to stevieweebyshow.com and all my stuff's connected it'll connect you to my band camp it'll connect you to the youtube all that stuff um and i also have a band camp similar to him stevieweebybandcamp.com i'm working on new stuff right now i Heck don't know yeah. yeah i don't know if when i'm gonna release it but i'm a, i'm it's music i'm re- working on new music okay uh what, what else did i miss uh the Oh, yeah, Stevie on the Streety. Check that out. It's a new series on my YouTube channel where I do interviews on the street. And it's bizarre. It's entertaining. And it's awesome. I have an uh, uh, unboxing video called Stevie's P.O. Box. Uh, If you want to get involved with that, send your packages to 1425 North Cherokee Avenue, P.O. Box 1391. Oh, I watched one. L.A., California. Thank you. 90093. <laughs> Support uh, the other affiliated podcasts, uh, Losco Projects, Necroelectric, and WFE. I'll buy a copy of Hollows Grove, which is my buddy's movie here. And now it's time for little... Hey, man, give me a pound. Love hey. having you here. Yo, I got to get one of these Stevie Weeby stickers. Um, I How think I, I, have, I, I, think I, I have one. I have one in the box. So I'll give you. Uh, I got you. I got word, you. Word, word. Now right. it's time for Little Ray's World.
Welcome to Lil Ray's World Show. All I gotta say is kids' minds must grow. I got abducted by some aliens dropped in snow. Whoa. Stuck into a world I do not know. So join me in adventures now. And I promise not to have a cow. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey. My name is Little Ray. Hey, hey, hey. So welcome to my world. To all the boys and girls. Welcome to Little Ray's world. What the hell is that, babe? Looks like a god dang square, man. Hey, what's your deal, partner? <laughs> Let me see if I heard this correctly, partner. Your name was Laird. You thought you were a male model. And you were too busy looking at yourself on your god dang phone adjusting your hair. And one day, you tripped on a flight of stairs, cracked your head open, and died, didn't you? <gasps> That's the problem with today's society, man, is people like you. Instead of looking at people in the goddamn eyes, you're too busy looking at yourself on your phone, man. Let me tell you something, partner. You're no Leonardo DiCaprio or Tom Hardy. Or even Christian Bale, man. You're not a model or an actor or anything. And you get what you deserve for being so self-centered. Me and Beep wrote a song about you, man. And it goes like this, Laird. This one's about Laird the Square, man. You gotta see it to believe it. Uh, Laird the Square from Delaware, you met him there. Chair. All he do is stare and stare at himself Unaware you see these type of people every day Men everywhere, especially the cons on their phones Looking at their hair One day on a stair, stumble on his shoes to wear Cracked his head wide open, I'm not joking man Grow a pair, bled out as he said a prayer Looking like the dragon's lair Dying at the bottom of the flight of stairs He was scared, the moral of the story share Pay attention like you care Be aware like a bear Join us in about two weeks, partner, for another episode of Little Ray's World, man. And make sure you go to www.stevieweebyshow.com and get some of that cool merchandise, man. Let's get her done.